Released in February of 1977, television's debut long player, Marky Moon, is an artful collection of twin guitar explorations, symbolist poetics, and hard-boiled narratives. The LP remains one of the high watermarks of New York City's mid-70s punk explosion, which included Patti Smith, Blondie, The Ramones, and Talking Heads, all of whom played regularly at the tiny Bowery club known as CBGB. Television, originally consisting of guitarists Tom Verlaine and Richard Lloyd, plus drummer Billy Ficka and bassist Richard Hell, got there first. In early 1974, the band convinced CBGB owner Hilly Crystal to let them take over the club's typically dead Sunday night slot, and soon earned a fiercely devoted audience. But the band lagged behind its punk peers in actually releasing a full-length LP. Patti Smith's Horses hit stores in 1975, and the self-titled debuts of both Blondie and the Ramones soon followed in 76. With a volatile lineup and a mercurial frontman in Verlaine, it seemed possible the television might never get around to painting its masterpiece. The road to Marquee Moon was a rocky one. Television's first foray into a pro studio situation came in late 1974, when the band cut a demo with Island Records a r man Richard Williams and art rock provocateur Brian Eno, fresh out of Roxy Music. A record geek's dream come true, perhaps, but Verlaine and Lloyd were unimpressed with the results, unable to jibe with Eno's unorthodox methods. At one point, he suggested suspending the band's amplifiers from the studio's ceiling. The tapes remained unreleased, though heavily bootlegged to this day. Television forged ahead over the next two years, replacing Richard Hell with Fred Smith and honing their sound to a razor-sharp point during regular residencies at CBGB. To help bring television's vision to wax at long last, the band enlisted a decidedly unpunk producer, Andy Johns, best known for his engineering work with Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones. But the pairing was an inspired one, as Johns delivered a tough, relatively unadorned sound for Marky Moon. Lloyd's painstakingly double-track guitar lines gained a crystalline flavor, while Verlaine's more spontaneous excursions provided a perfect counterpoint. In See No Evil, the album's revved-up opener, Verlaine promises to pull down the future over Lloyd's churning riff. Venus is a surrealistic nocturnal journey, punctuated by an elegantly intertwining six-string refrain from the two guitarists. Friction, meanwhile, is television at their garage rockiest, with Verlaine spewing free jazz-inspired fireworks over a rock-steady backing from Lloyd, Ficka, and Smith. Looming at Marquee Moon's direct center is the album's title track. Clocking in at just under 10 minutes on the original vinyl release and featuring a lengthy Verlaine guitar solo, Marquee Moon is miles away from the Ramones' minimalist rock antics or Blondie's ironic pop moves. For precedence, look to the expansive West Coast psychedelia of Quicksilver Messenger Service or even The Grateful Dead even if the mid-70s crowd at CBGB would likely shudder at such comparisons. <music> Upon its release, the NME's Nick Kent called Marky Moon a 24-carat inspired work of pure genius, a record finely in tune and sublimely arranged with a whole new slant on dynamics. Other records might wither in the face of such a rave, but 40 years later, Marquee Moon remains a singular achievement that transcends the punk label and still sounds as fresh today as it did in 1977.